At ground zero today, firefighters on the front line still spraying the smoldering wreckage more than a day after the explosion. Working all through the night, hundreds of rescue teams picking through the rubble, but it's tough, slow work. There are literally mountains of debris here. The soot alone is two feet deep. The air is filled with choking dust. Power saws cutting through steel, blow torches slicing mangled girders. Though the chances of getting anyone out alive are now fading, there is still determination. I've seen a couple of police officers, a couple of firefighters, a couple of civilians. There's a lot of people to pull down. Rescue teams from across New England and the mid-Atlantic states are working in 12-hour shifts. But most don't want to quit, even when their shift is done. They don't want to give up. We work here, the other rescuers work there, and we all work as a team, so everybody's working as hard as we can. And yeah, these guys would work till they drop to get people out. The emergency workers behind me are waiting their turn to go into the rubble. It is hard to imagine that what is on the other side of these workers is what is left of the World Trade Towers. You can see a portion of the archway that literally connected the two towers. It is crumbled now and on the ground. And just a few blocks, two to three blocks away, what was the top of this 110-story tower is now collapsed, and it looks like a structure that's arching out of the ground. It's a mess. It's like your worst nightmare. You could never even believe what it's, what it's like in it. Did you want to come? Oh, of course, everybody does. We're going to need everybody because it's going to take a long time. Even after more than a day at the heart of an unthinkable disaster, all the firefighters like Robert Fithian want to do is keep working to make certain no one is left behind. Rahima Ellis, NBC News in Lower Manhattan.